Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, we have the latest on a deadly crash on the city's south side. Plus, the fight against the coronavirus is facing a new setback this morning as another major drug trial is put on hold. Starting out at San Antonio International at 67 degrees. We will see if that changes, of course, at the top of the hour. But right now we say good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is the 14th of October. Thanks for joining us this morning. I felt like it was a little more humid than it was yesterday morning. I think that is the trend. Are we on target, Mike Osterhage? Yeah, it, it's still pleasant, but not that, ooh, kind of, you know, yeah, right? I noticed it right away. Right, and we're going to see some more humidity throughout the day. Also, with the extra humidity around here this morning, there's a little bit of fog starting to uh, show up. So temperatures, uh, remember yesterday we were down in the low 50s out in parts of the Hill Country. Now it's upper 50s, low 60s. 67 here in town will drop maybe another couple of degrees. And then here's the, uh, the dew point temperatures, which are definitely up compared to yesterday. The measure of moisture in the atmosphere. So we were looking at uh, 40s, 50s, even some. 30s. Remember, it was like a 20 degree drop in dew points from the previous day. Now it has definitely gone up. So we're flirting with feeling more humid, especially around, say, Port S.A., Stinson, Pleasanton. Dew point is 67. Yeah, that's a lot of humidity. And now we're starting to see fog in LaGrange, quarter mile visibility, a little bit around Pleasanton. And as always the case, it's going to start to get thicker. And right around sunrise, that's the time we're going to be seeing it, uh, some of the thickest fog around here. So keep that in mind uh, throughout the rest of the morning. Everything is on the low side, but we've got kind of a laundry list of allergens out there. And we'll have that patch of fog around this morning. Temperatures uh, may drop another couple of degrees, but it's not going to cool down that much. Hill Country, light jacket. And then later on today, uh -uh, you're not going to need that. 92 for high temperature. Wind out of the south, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Another hot day tomorrow. Then the front comes on through here then you will need a jacket. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now on this Wednesday morning hitting the roads. The man, the myth, the legend, Officer Marcus Trujillo has everything you need to know about everything, right? Stay home. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, have, if you can't stay home, if you have to venture out, uh, just remember, buckle up, watch that speed once you head out. So far, not too much going on out there on the roadways. Of course, we have the overnight construction like we did out there, I-10 and Dominion, but at 35 Randolph, you can see North and southbound lanes running smoothly right now. For Tinicolero, we have some flashing lights. That's due to that construction right there, uh, Highway 151 and uh, military area. Highway 9035, no problems there. And here's that construction, I-10 Dominion. Now, remember yesterday, this went well past 6 o'clock. We had long lines on those westbound main lanes of I-10. So hopefully, we won't have a repeat of that today. Mark? Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, San Antonio police trying to figure out who shot a man overnight on the city's northeast side. SAPD says just before three this morning, a 29 year old man driving near Walsham and Eisenhower when he was suddenly shot in the arm. The man was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Police say the shooting appears to be random and they are still looking for the person responsible. Folks will once again be heading to the polls for a second day of early voting in the 2020 election. And we're already getting a good idea of how many people turned out for day one. Our Sarah Costa joins us now for a look at the numbers so far. Good morning, Sarah. Lots of lines yesterday. Anywhere you pass by, mm -hmm. the lines are usually wrapped around, waiting anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour or more. And more than 33,000 people turned out for that first day of early voting here in Bear County. Even though that's a lot, it's still not a record breaking number though as more as more than 34,000 turned out to vote on the first day in 2018. But across Texas, there were some historic numbers in Harris County. The Texas Tribune reports that voters blew past the record with more than 128,000 people casting their ballot on day one in early voting. And in Travis County, more than 25,000 ballots were cast here at home. The large turnout caused some delays at some polling locations. Also contributing to those delays, more than 13,000, excuse me, 1,300 people who filled out a mail ballot showed up at the polls. That meant election officials had to cancel those mail ballots by using one of the voting booths. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. A man running across the street on the city's south side hit and killed by a driver. Police tell us a man in his 50s was running across South Zarzamora just past Mayfield when a woman driving along Zarzamora hit him. The woman did stop to help and told police she did not see him and there was no crosswalk in the area. 
The man died at the scene. Police say that driver will not face any charges. Now to the fight against the coronavirus. Another major vaccine trial has been put on hold. The news comes as hospitalizations rise in all but seven states. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. This morning, the fight against COVID facing a new setback as another major drug trial is put on hold. Pharmaceutical giant Eli Lilly pausing phase three of its testing on its antibody cocktail, citing undisclosed safety concerns. This marks the second trial to be postponed in as many days. On Monday, Johnson & Johnson paused its phase three vaccine trial because of an unexplained illness. The very fact that the trial has been paused and the data are being reviewed is a very good thing. It shows you that the system that we have in place to monitor the safety of the vaccines and the rigorous con conduct of the trial is in place and it's working. It comes as 34 states report new increases in cases. Connecticut now seeing its highest level of infection since June. Officials in Michigan now warning the state may be seeing a second wave and hospitals in Oklahoma on the brink. Doctors say every ICU bed in Oklahoma City is taken. The state's mask mandate has been extended through December, while in Wisconsin... We're seeing somewhat of a perfect storm. More than 3,000 new cases and a record number of deaths reported Tuesday. Doctors warning everyone to keep their guard up. We see this cycle where uh, cases go down a bit uh, and then people get complacent, institutions get complacent, uh, and then cases rise back up uh, as there's a loosening. We shouldn't be cavalier. Across the country, cities are seeing new clusters linked to so-called super spreader events. We have not seen an event like this before at any time throughout this pandemic. Near New York City, at least 37 people were infected and hundreds are now in quarantine after a Sweet 16 party. Meanwhile, health officials say new outbreaks in offices around Boston could be linked to carpooling. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Turning now to COVID-19 in Bear County, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierberg announced 172 new cases and six new deaths during the latest briefing. In addition, city officials say there are 190 people in local hospitals, 78 in ICU, 39 on ventilators. And time now is 437 and 67 degrees. Still ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, we'll get a look at Apple's first 5G iPhone. And next, why some people receiving Social Security will soon see an increase and their monthly checks. We've been chatting about it for a couple of days. Let's get the latest on that cold front. Coming up with Mike Osterhage right here on GMSA. We'll be back. Just about 441 after facing 11 hours of questioning, confirmation hearings for Judge Amy Coney Barrett will continue today. Senate Republicans are promising a final vote before Election Day, despite Democratic calls to let voters decide who should pick a new Supreme Court justice. Barrett faced questions on abortion, health care, and a possible disputed election fight over transferring presidential power. She insisted she would bring no personal agenda to the court, but decide cases as they come. Democrats spent much of their time questioning Barrett about health care, arguing that placing her on the high court would place in jeopardy the Affordable Care Act. Republicans spent much of their hearing time responding to Democratic questions they said were unfair. Americans who receive Social Security will see a small bump in their monthly check starting in January. The Social Security Administration says the payments will go up by 1.3% to account for the rising cost of living. That means the average monthly check will increase by $20 to $1,543. Bucks. Those who receive Social Security disability benefits will see an extra $16 a month. But for many seniors, those amounts will not cover the growing cost of groceries and other expenses. Expenses. About 70 million Americans receive Social Security benefits. Drug maker Pfizer is planning to start testing its experimental coronavirus vaccine on children as young as 12. The researcher leading the drug trial says parents have already expressed interest in enrolling their kids. It will be the first coronavirus vaccine trial to include children in the U.S. The Vaccine Research Center at Cincinnati Children's Hospital says teenagers aged 16 and 17 will get the vaccine this week. The center says kids between the ages of 12 to 15 will be enrolled in the trial at a later time. Time now is 442 and 67 degrees. Still ahead, an important warning for parents of infants about using nursing pillows for sleep. And also next, a first look at the brand new Apple iPhone 12.
in this morning's GMA First Look, a closer look at the new iPhone. This is the day we've all been looking forward to. New models with better cameras, a magnetic back for accessories or charging, and new colors. This is the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro. The first thing I notice is the squared off edges. Then there's the new colors. This is blue and Pacific blue. But the big headline, it's Apple's first 5G iPhone. Today, we're bringing 5G to iPhone. Hardly anybody can get it. Is it worth upgrading to this phone just for that? I'm not going to say go out and run to get 5G. I don't think you really need to go get a 5G phone yet. You may not use it, but this is kind of a way to future-proof yourself. And coming up at 7 a.m., only Good Morning America has exclusive access to the new iPhone. We'll show you firsthand all the new features and details that has the phone world buzzing. So stay tuned. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. A warning for the parents of infants. The Consumer Product Safety Commission telling parents not to use nursing pillows for sleep. 12 on your size, Marilyn Moritz says this comes as the agency investigates more than two dozen infant deaths. Pillows like this are a comfortable convenience for nursing moms, but now the Consumer Product Safety Commission warns do not allow infants to sleep on nursing pillows or other pillow-like products. The issue is not using nursing pillows for breastfeeding or bottle feeding. Um, it's really when babies are put to sleep, either propped up on the nursing pillow or flat on the nursing pillow, but then they roll over and suffocate. Rachel Rabkin Peachman, investigative journalist for Consumer Reports, says the government is investigating at least 28 infant deaths from 2012 to 2018, possibly linked to nursing pillows or lounge pads. The CPSC is investigating the entire class of products, no specific brand. Rabkin says it's critical that parents get the message. The message also should be to manufacturers that their packaging and marketing and labeling needs to be very clear because parents are confused about how to use these products. It is so tempting to leave a sleeping baby where they fall asleep, but these products are intended for feeding and not for sleeping. Pediatricians say babies should sleep on a firm flat surface with no pillows. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Just about 448. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Looks pretty quiet right now. Right now it's not too bad, Stephanie. As we take a look at the roadways, you can see no accidents. Just that little bit of construction uh, that we still had, I-10 at Dominion. But let's take a look at some other areas. This is 281 Winding Way. We have some flashing lights there off to the side on the access road, but the main lanes, northbound and southbound, still running smoothly. No problems there. 410 at Northwest Military Highway. And as we move over to the 35 at Thousand Oaks, starting to see some increases in the traffic, particularly on those southbound main lanes all the way through 35 at Weedner. And taking a look here, I-10 Dominion. Hopefully we won't have a repeat of yesterday. That'll get picked up on time. We won't be seeing any delays for the westbound lanes of I-10. Thank you very much, Marcus. Mike, we're so anxious to hear about the front, but first things first. It's a little warmer out there this morning, a little more humid, not bad. I mean, it's not like you're getting slapped in the face or anything like that, but <laughs> like you were saying, Stephanie, you can kind of, you know, you, you sort of feel it, right? Yeah, we can tell. You don't really smell it yet. No, not Humidity. yet. Humidity. That'll be, that, that's to come <laughs> though. Uh, take a look at this picture. I love it. I mean, the sunsets, sunrises are always stunning. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And just, if you would please, sideways on the phone. But that's a great shot. Thanks very much for that. All right, uh, nothing showing up here in town right now. However, we do have some hints of fog around the area. Uh, obviously, nothing metropolitan area. Down around Pleasanton, seven miles, so not bad. But then you go off to the east, quarter mile in Lagrange, and Victoria has now dropped down to quarter mile visibility. And like I said off the top of the show, as is usually the case, this is going to start to kind of edge its way to the west and we'll start to see some of these uh, visibilities drop down a little bit in the next couple of hours and the reason for it is because we got some more humidity around here dew point temperatures remember these numbers yesterday were negative 20 negative 25 we had dropped down that much from the previous day and it was so nice and crisp now the humidity has come back up a little bit and the dew points have gone up about uh, what 5 10 12 20 degrees in rock springs that's how much more humidity there is out there like i said it's not as though it's that 
summer kind of slappy in the face sort of humidity, but just enough to help keep low temperatures or to keep temperatures up just a little bit more. And that's going to continue to come back up here uh, throughout the rest of the day and tomorrow. Then there's Friday, the big drop in dew points and the humidity and temperatures as well, because that big front is going to be moving on through here. And that'll be Friday, Saturday. It's not going to last all that long, though. It's not like you can get really, you know, let the, the glue dry on this uh, this colder air coming on in here, but it is going to be definitely chilly on Friday. Here's what uh, one computer model is indicating, which does a pretty good job. And when you see all the, the little spots of what look like moisture on here, it's just kind of that humidity coming back on in. Not necessarily any, any rain. We may have some more fog around tomorrow. But to take away from this is watch coming in here out of the north. This is tomorrow evening, so the front's kind of delayed just a little bit. It looked like it was going to be about mid late afternoon. Now I'm thinking late afternoon and even early evening tomorrow will be very warm ahead of it. The later it goes, the warmer we can get. So instead of upper 80s, it's going to be low 90s tomorrow like today. Then that front moves on through here that will squeeze out some showers. It's not rain everywhere. Not a big deal, but there will be a few showers around primarily the first portion of the day on Friday and with the cloud cover, it's looking like it's going to stay fairly cloudy. I don't think we hit 70 on Friday for a high temperature. 83 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies. We'll have some uh, fog to deal with this morning. 92 for high temperature, mostly sunny skies. Humidity is going to start to come back in here, so you'll feel that uh, 92 a little bit more. And then tomorrow we stay about 70 in the morning, 92 in the afternoon. Front's going to move through in the evening and a couple of showers late and then overnight into early Friday. Windy Friday. Again, I'm thinking only 68 for a high temperature on Friday and blustery. blustery. Then 50 on Saturday. <laughs> Still a few clowns around here, but then all of a sudden we bounce back up to 86 on Sunday. So our game changer ah. is late Thursday into Friday morning. Right. So it'll be dinner time mm -hmm. tomorrow night when the front starts to work its way through here. So I know we're so excited. Yeah. Uh, just have to get through today. Yeah. Right. And most of tomorrow. Most of tomorrow. Yeah, we can do that. We Thanks can. Tonight. 452, 67 degrees. And coming up next, a preview of a new Netflix documentary on a popular girl group, plus why Stevie Wonder is getting political with his new music. You pick three numbers, 723, Fireball 0, daily 43975, Fireball 6. Cash 5, 1, 8, 11, 12, 14. And your Mega Millions, 11, 44, 45, 46, 70. Mega Ball 25, Mega Player 2. Good luck. A new Netflix documentary takes a look at the biggest girl group in the world right now. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Some insight into the K-pop phenomenon that is Blackpink. A new Netflix documentary takes us behind the scenes with the biggest girl group on the planet right now. And director Caroline Su tells me everyone from casual fans to diehard blinks will learn something new. I mean, it's just like a very simple story of girls coming from different backgrounds and working really hard and, and then kind of becoming more successful than, than they could have imagined. So I hope it's inspiring to people. Blackpink, Light Up the Sky is on Netflix today. Emmy nominated two and a half men star Conchata Farrell has died. She played the feisty housekeeper Berta on the hit show. Her co-star Charlie Sheen tweeted that Farrell was an absolute sweetheart and a genuine friend. She died from heart problems. Conchata Farrell was 77. Stevie Wonder getting political with new music. The song Can't Put It in the Hands of Fate speaks of protests, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and more. Proceeds from a second new track, Where's Our Love Song, will go to the charity Feeding America. The songs are the first releases off Wonder's new music label, What the Fuss Records, which means Wonder has left Motown Records, where the 70-year-old superstar has made music his entire career. And eight-time Grammy-winning singer Usher with a birthday today, he's 42. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Exactly three till five, 67 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the high stakes confirmation hearings for Judge Amy Coney Barrett continue again today after the Supreme Court nominee faced questions for more than 11 hours yesterday. Plus, Apple says it will no longer include a wall charger or wired headphones with the new iPhone 12. Details ahead in Tech Bytes. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, local voters turning out in huge numbers to cast their votes early for the 2020 election. Day three in the Supreme Court confirmation hearing of Judge Amy Coney Barrett. I'm Elizabeth Schulze. The highlights so far coming up. 
and taking a look out with live cam this morning. Not as crisp as yesterday, but still okay at 67 degrees. Still looking forward to that cold front though. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We'll get an idea when that window rattler could be in our area. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is Wednesday. It is October 14th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you're having a good week so far. I know ours will get better soon, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Mike, what is the latest on the ETA? About, uh, let me do the math real quick. So 24 hours plus about it. And we're looking at tomorrow evening. So I can't add those up that quickly in my head. So uh, 36, uh, yeah, about 36 hours. Carry the two, yeah. No, actually later that. Hey, we'll just get to the graphics right now and I'll show you when it's going to be here. 36, 40, 40 hours, something like that. 67 degrees right now. Uh, the dew point temperature, notice that bottom number on that graph is up to 59. Yesterday that was in the low 50s, 40s, so we are seeing some more humidity around here. It's still a, a pleasant morning, but you're going to notice the humidity as the day rolls on. We're going to make it up to 92 for high temperature later on today. And yeah, obviously well above normal by about 10 degrees. The aquifer did uh, drop down big chunk yesterday, 1.1 feet. And as far as the allergens are concerned, we've got a bunch of them out there, but everything is on the low side right now. With the return of the humidity, we are starting to see a little bit of fog around the area. Visibility now in Bear County right now is pretty good. Most in the metropolitan area, but as usual, one of the usual spots seen fog early is Pleasanton and that's dropped down now to five miles from seven last hour and also off to the east of LaGrange, Victoria just a quarter mile visibility. So we'll have to watch for some of this to kind of, you know, scooch its way off to the west a little bit more in the next couple of hours. And a lot of times we see our thickest fog right around the time the sun starts to come up, which is uh, just after 730 this morning. So pleasant not as crisp like Stephanie was saying, and then the patchy fog this morning, mostly sunny. It's going to be pretty uh, hot today up in the low 90s and some humidity, so you will notice it. And then tomorrow, very warm again, low 90s because the front's kind of delayed a little bit, so that just allows us more warm up time. Then the evening is when the front's going to move through about dinner time, give or take. And wow, get ready because it's going to be a whole different story on Friday. Will that story continue into the weekend? Details coming up. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. What's going on, sir? Well, Mike, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, still looking pretty good as far as the highways are concerned. Right now, we're looking at 410 Equilibra. Now, we did see some flashing lights earlier on the access road, and this is in that general area where we have that 410 Highway 151 construction ongoing. But right now, it looks like they've cleared out of the way and traffic in both directions to 410 still running smoothly right now. Mark and Stephanie. Thanks, Marcus. Judge Amy Coney Barrett faces another day of questioning by members of the Senate Judiciary Committee. In the high stakes hearing, Barrett is facing questions on abortion, health care, and the possibility of a disputed election. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze is in Washington with the latest. During a marathon 11 hour hearing, Judge Amy Coney Barrett declining to say how she would rule on hot button issues like abortion, health care and gay rights. I'm not going to, as Justice Kagan put it, give a thumbs up or thumbs down to any particular precedent. It's precedent of the Supreme Court that gives same sex couples the right to marry. Democrats, including vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris, keeping focus on the Affordable Care Act, which comes before the court the week after the election. Would you consider the 135 million people who gained protections under the Affordable Care Act when deciding uh, a case that challenges that law. I would consider all the protections that Congress put in place. On abortion rights, Barrett calling several cases super precedents, which she believes cannot be challenged. Roe v. Wade was not one of them. Roe is not a super precedent because calls for its overruling have never ceased, but that doesn't mean that Roe should be overruled. It just means that it doesn't fall on the small handful of cases like Marbury versus Madison and Brown versus the board that no one questions anymore. The hearings at times getting personal. Have you seen the George Floyd video? I have. What impact did it have on you? Senator, as you might imagine, given that I have two black children, that was very very personal for my family. But Judge Barrett repeatedly insisting her personal views won't interfere with the court. With the election now just 20 days away, President Trump has said he's counting on Barrett and the court to look at the ballots. Asked whether she would recuse herself from an election dispute case, Barrett saying this. I would consider it, let's see, I certainly hope that all members of the committee have more confidence in my integrity 
than to think that I would allow myself to be used as a pawn to decide this election. The Senate Judiciary Committee is expected to approve Barrett tomorrow, setting up her likely confirmation by the full Senate before Election Day. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, Bear County's district attorney has created a team of lawyers who will supervise election officials, or rather advise election officials, during what's expected to be a massive turnout for the general election. Our Sarah Costa joins us this morning to explain how this team will work. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says five attorneys will be on the team to provide clarity on issues and questions regarding the election. Gonzalez says election judges who have questions about issues like voter eligibility can call the response team, and legal advisors will be on hand to provide legal advice to them. In some cases, the lawyers may be sent to the scene to resolve the issue in person. This has been a very controversial and very contentious election cycle. We anticipate that the election process likewise will be controversial and contentious. A record 1,181,000 residents are registered to vote in Bear County. Again, early voting lasts until October 30th. Election day is November 3rd. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you very much. A San Antonio suburb of Windcrest showed up in big numbers to cast their votes early this election cycle. People stood in line that stretched all the way from the road to the Civic Center to let their voices be heard. Some people surprised by the massive turnout, but were happy to see so many participating. At the same time, some were frustrated with why the process was taking so long, saying they wish there was a better way to get people in and out in a timely manner. I was at the very entrance. We were in line for three and a half hours before we got inside. Anybody after eight, it was a six to seven hour window. It was, it was, it's, it's just utterly ridiculous. With the help of volunteers, she gave drinks and snacks to those waiting in line to encourage them to stay in line to vote. She plans to do so until the election is over. And food trucks were set up at the AT&T Center on the first day of early voting. Organizers at the mega voting site there were expecting a larger voter turnout on Tuesday and hosted food trucks for those who were casting their ballots on their lunch breaks. The Chow Train, a nonprofit food truck, also gave out lunch bags to voters for free. The people standing in line are hungry and I know thirsty and so we just wanted to encourage people just to keep stand in line, stay in line and vote. It is very kind that people are out here giving away free food for, the, for those who have voted and it just speaks volumes to how important this uh, election is. Early voting locations including the AT&T Center are open up again to, at 8 a.m. today. Right now it's 508, 67 degrees. And still ahead, Apple makes a change about what accessories it will offer when you get that new phone. October can sometimes be known as Pinktober due to Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Many people buy and use pink products to help contribute to the cause. Well, up next, we'll show you what you need to look out for when it comes to a charity scam known as pink washing. And taking a look out with live cam, it's an okay 67 degrees for now. We can deal with that. But for those of you who are looking forward to a cold front, you're going to have to wait past today and through most of tomorrow. We're going to check in with Mike for the full details of the week just ahead. During Breast Cancer Awareness Month, you'll see pink everywhere from ribbons on shirts to sports jerseys. It's a great way to support the cause, but you have to be careful just because it's pink doesn't mean it's actually supporting the movement to find a cure for breast cancer. October is the month where many take the time to show support for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and pink is the color of choice when it comes to showing your involvement. Many different organizations sell things like t-shirts, jewelry, and even kitchen appliances to get people involved. But with the good also comes the bad, as some charity scammers can prey on people's good intentions to generate income for themselves. It's something that's called pink washing. The Better Business Bureau says that it has found pink products ranging from from lint rollers to teddy bears. Products like these usually have a shop for the cure label or other marketing language that leads people to believe that by buying the product, they're helping cure breast cancer. The founder of the cancer nonprofit Cleaning for Reasons says people really need to look twice at what they are buying and contributing to. Consumers should look out for vague claims on packaging and be aware of products
products that require you to mail in a proof of purchase before donations are made. Okay, right now it's 513, 67 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to tell you why Netflix has decided to end free trials of its service in the U.S. Plus, NASA is setting some new rules as it sets its sights on another moon landing. Everyone has a story, a history. We have different needs and challenges. But one thing we share is wanting to make our lives the best they can be. If you have Medicaid and Medicare, a dual complete plan from United Healthcare can help, giving you more benefits at no extra cost to you and one-on-one -on -one help managing your care to get you the help you need, whatever your story may be. With dual complete from United Healthcare, there's more for you. Hi, Sabrina. Hi, Jen. Hi, so you're the scientist here. Does my Aveeno Daily Moisturizer really make my dry skin healthier in one day? It's true, Jen. Really? This prebiotic old formula moisturizes to help prevent dry skin. Impressive. Aveeno, healthy. It's our nature. Right now, join Planet Fitness for no enrollment fee. Keep it fresh in a squeaky clean club and at home with the Planet Fitness app. Join for no enrollment fee. Just $10 a month, no commitment. Hurry, this deal ends tomorrow. 516, Apple's new iPhone 12 will not come with headphones like previous models. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, no more wired headphones for the iPhone. That's one of the changes announced as Apple unveiled its iPhone 12. You also won't get a wall charger. Instead, it will come with a USB cord. Apple says the move is to reduce shipping costs. Pre-ordering begins Friday. Netflix is no longer offering free trials. For years, the company had given new customers one free month of service, far more generous than many of its competitors. Netflix says it will look at different ways to attract new customers. And NASA has laid out some rules for countries participating in its new moon mission program. Rule number one is no fighting among nations. Other rules prohibit leaving anything behind and disturbing areas involved in past lunar landings. NASA hopes to put humans back on the moon by 2024. Also, keep your hands and your feet to yourself. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Okay, 17 past the hour. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. <laughs> Well, thank you, Stephanie. Right now, we're seeing some slight increases in the traffic over there, 410 at Culeta, but the good news is nothing that should delay your travel times. Right now, all the travel times are well within the normal travel time range. I-10 Ralph Fair Road, not too bad out there. And I-10 at the Y here in the downtown city, you can see no issues. 21 at Winding Way, what's missing from this picture? All the traffic that's going to come later on. So. Uh, right now, pretty much have the road to yourself in this part of the city. Just a matter of time. Thank you, Marcus. And a beautiful picture behind you, Mike. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. You know, we've been seeing some really pretty sunrises and sunsets the past few days. Uh, today uh, depends if you get to some of the clouds to move on in. Uh, we do have a little bit of fog already starting to develop. We're going to show you that in a second. But yeah, that's just a beautiful picture. Sunset on the far south side. Oh, that's pretty. I love the trees out there with no leaves on them. It kind of really adds to it. All right, this is looking off uh, to the kind of west and northwest over toward the, the medical center. And as you can see, there may be a few clouds right there along the, the horizon. As visibility, well, it was down to five miles. Now it's back up to seven miles visibility. So just that hint of fog in Pleasanton and uh, LaGrange, Victoria, both still quarter mile visibility. So these numbers really haven't changed that much. Also, there are a couple of hints of fog down around uh, 35 on on the uh, southwest side so just keep keep tabs on that and if you plan on leaving later on this morning just watch out for uh, some of that fog to develop so yesterday we did make it up to 90 and some low 90s around the area and then compared to today and notice how these numbers are up a couple of degrees so it is going to be warmer we're looking at 97 in Catula, 96 in laredo and most all the metropolitan area is going to be in the low 90s so about 10 degrees above normal today plus a bit of humidity so we've got dew points that are still pleasant, but they are up from yesterday. And even though they'll be, you know, okay this afternoon, it's not going to be cool and crisp out there. You'll, you'll definitely notice the low 90s and then the humidity is going to definitely continue to work its way back in here overnight and into tomorrow morning. And especially tomorrow morning, I think we may see some uh, some fog around the area. But then here comes the drier air, which is going to work its way in here. And that's going to be later on tomorrow, probably about dinner time, give or take. That's been delayed 
by a few hours, and so that's going to allow us a little extra time to heat up tomorrow. So instead of upper 80s, looks like another day in the low 90s tomorrow. Upstairs in the atmosphere, this is drier air, the darker shade. That's a little more moisture. Remember yesterday we had a kind of that milky shade to the sky. That'll be the situation again today. Satellite picture, not much is showing up. As a matter of fact, not much showing up around the country at all. We do have rain, a little bit of frozen precipitation in the higher elevations. Most all of this is moving straight west to east, which is pretty much a, a kind of a zonal flow, as we call it, and that keeps temperatures at or even a little bit above normal for us. But that will be changing, unfortunately, as far as precipitation from this next frontal passage. It's not looking good. There's going to be a couple of showers out there, but not much at all. 83 degrees today, mostly sunny skies, and then a high temperature today up into the low 90s. By the way, the noon temperature is already at the normal high, or maybe a little bit above that. 92 for high today with mostly sunny, and then, like I said, tomorrow is going to be on the warm side again. Now, we do have that chance for a couple of showers late tomorrow night and early on Friday really few and far between just a couple of them getting squeezed out there. I think we keep enough clouds around Friday to hold temperatures down just in the upper 60s and it's going to be breezy and then Saturday morning is going to be 50. Friday night is going to be really good for football <laughs> and rain should be out of here. So are, are That's you excited? Are you officially calling this one a humdinger? A doozy? Yeah. Well, the, you know, the one a couple of weeks ago was pretty much that. But yeah. this one also is going to be pretty good, too, just okay. with the, the winds that are going to be, you know, pretty breezy during the day on Friday. Yes, yeah. we keep a lot in the way of cloud cover around here. I'm so. waiting for him to double down on doozy. Before Friday. You think so? Potentially a sheep roast it. No, nah, well, might. maybe. Sort of. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> he German, might. German deli food sounds good when it's cold. Yes. 521, 67 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, the Mad Max franchise getting a new movie and Amazon buying Coming to America. Let's take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick 3723 three, Fireball Zero. Daily four, three, nine, seven, five, Fireball Six. Cash five, one, eight, eleven, twelve, fourteen. And your Mega Millions, 11, 44, 45, 46, 70, Mega Ball 25, Mega Plier 2. Good luck. Many U.S. movie theaters are still closed due to the pandemic. Despite that, and in one case because of it, there is plenty of movie news today. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Get ready for more Furiosa. The warrior played by Charlize Theron in Mad Max Fury Road is getting a prequel movie. Mad Max creator George Miller has cast Emma and Split star Anya Taylor-Joy to play the younger Furiosa. Is Eddie okay? You know what Eddie is. That he's a thief? Yes, I know what Eddie is. When the truth is anybody looking? Is Everyone's looking, and they're looking for you too. This young woman is no marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Rachel Brosnahan, the Emmy-winning star of that series, plays a sheltered young wife forced to go on the run with her baby after her husband betrays his partners in I'm Your Woman. Amazon just released the first trailer for the crime drama set in the 70s, which debuts in select theaters December 4th and on Prime Video December 11th. I want a woman that's going to arouse my intellect as well as my loins. Where will you find such a woman? In America. It appears the Coming to America sequel won't be coming to theaters. Deadline reports Paramount has sold Coming to America to Amazon, and the Eddie Murphy comedy will premiere this December on the streaming service instead of in cinemas. The reported purchase price, around $125 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. After decades of rumors, it's finally here. And all we have to do is wait uh, till December. Yeah, uh, it's going to be uh, interesting so many years later. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we'll see what kind of take they, they take this time. Should be fun to watch. 527, 67 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, medical experts are warning that a fall winter COVID-19 surge is here and it's likely to cause problems for months. Plus, Bear County Elections Administrator weighs in on how different this year's election is compared to previous years. And why certain foods you're eating may be causing your skin to age a little faster. We're going to tell you which ones.
Welcome back. We back, uh, jump back in feet first to GMSA. It is Wednesday the 14th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you're having a great week so far. Um, I woke up and I walked out and I was excited because I was thinking ahead to Friday, but then I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Mike's laughing at me. And I was like, oh, not Friday yet. <laughs> the anticipation is killing us, Mike. Don't jump the gun. <laughs> but I did the same thing. It's like, ooh, a front. Well, no, it's not here yet. And I'm going right? to wait a little bit. So uh, we do have some pretty clear skies as of right now. This is looking off to the east, and you can see some of the, uh, the stars and planets out there. Temperatures are still above normal by, well, good uh, six, seven degrees or so. That's the number, though, that has changed. Yesterday, we were down in the uh, 50s and 40s for dew point temperatures. Now, we're still below 60. That's kind of the threshold. But again, you step outside, you can kind of just notice a little bit more humidity out there. Also, the extra humidity is adding to uh, some fog and zero visibility right now in LaGrange. Quarter mile Victoria, a little bit around Pleasanton, so it's still staying off to the east for the time being. But as is usually the case, as we go on through the morning, it tends to drift off uh, to the west a little bit. So we'll have to watch it in some of the usual spots. Um, right around Gonzales, New Braunfels, Pleasanton, and maybe even into uh, potentially into Eastern Bear County as far as some fog this morning. Everything's on the low side. Got a whole laundry list though of allergens from mold ragweed, juniper, and pigweed. And throughout the rest of today, 83 at noon. That's already the normal high temperature. Then we make it up to 92 later on today. And the southerly wind's going to continue to pull in some of the humidity. So it's not like it's going to be oppressively humid, but you'll definitely feel that 92. Same thing tomorrow, actually warmer in the morning. Then the front's going to be moving through about dinner time tomorrow. Then wait to see Friday. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Marcus Trujillo. It's been quiet up to this point. Still the case? Except for allergies. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, as we take a look at the roadways, roadways are doing pretty good. We are seeing some activity out there in that construction zone, I-10 uh, at the Minion. So let's uh, zoom in over there. We can see that uh, through TransGuide, they are starting to open up a couple of the main lanes of westbound I-10. So uh, does not look like we're going to have a repeat of yesterday. I know folks that normally travel that route are thankful for that. Mark and Stephanie. Thanks, Marcus. More than 135,000 more coronavirus deaths in the U.S. within the next few months. That's what researchers at the University of Washington are predicting in its most recent model. CNN's John Lawrence has more. COVID-19 isn't easing its grip on the United States. We're not in a plateau and we're certainly not going down. This virus is still very much among us. This is going to be one of the most uh, uh, troubling times uh, in our modern history. Health experts say the U.S. is facing a COVID-19 surge, one that could overwhelm hospitals. Not only do we anticipate a, a, a fall and winter rise in the number of cases, I'm worried about the deaths significantly going up. As more than 30 states in the U.S. have seen a rise in new COVID-19 cases in the past week, some medical setbacks. A trial for an antibody treatment from Eli Lilly is halted because of a possible safety issue. This comes one day after Johnson & Johnson said it's pausing an advanced clinical trial of a vaccine for a similar concern. There are no quick fixes here. This is why we have to do science. I'm actually not discouraged by these you know, pauses. This is why we do clinical trials. We'll get it right and we'll have great therapeutics. I'm not really worried about these, you know, speed bumps. That's why Americans are advised to not let their guard down over the next few months. This virus can spread in among families and friends if you are take your mask off and you're primarily indoors. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Here at home, a reminder that people who are not showing symptoms of COVID-19 can get tested for free at some of the city's testing sites. Now, previously, people had to show symptoms before receiving a test. The sites offering asymptomatic testing are the Ramirez Community Center and Cuellar Community Center. They are both open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. through Friday the 16th. Now, you don't need an appointment to get this test. They will be given out on a first-come, first-served basis. U.S. Supreme Court allowing the Trump administration to end the census count early. The decision while will stand while an appeal plays out in the lower courts. At issue is whether the administration's decision to shorten the census count by more than a month should be permitted. The administration says shorten, the shortened deadline is necessary to give the U.S. Commerce Department enough time to meet a December 31st first deadline to report final numbers. That decision was made shortly after a policy that excludes undocumented immigrants when dividing seats in the U.S. House of Representatives between states. 
A lower court blocked that policy and it's currently on appeal to the Supreme Court. The Justice Department is suing a former advisor to the First Lady, claiming she breached a confidentiality agreement. Stephanie Winston Wolkoff is an ex-friend of Melania Trump, who published a tell-all book. The Department of Justice complaint states she never got authorization to disclose details of her work for the First Lady. It also says it wants profits from the book to be secured in a government trust. Wolkoff says the President and First Lady are trying to use the Department of Justice to silence her. She says she exercised her right of free expression by writing this book. Just about 536, 68 degrees. We've all been told to stay out of the sun if we want our skin to look young and healthy. But certain foods can actually speed up your skin's aging process as well. Just ahead, which foods experts say you should steer clear from. And next, how you can win a new PlayStation 5 thanks to a new promotion from Burger King. And taking a look out with live cam, not too bad at 68 degrees, but if you are waiting for the cold front, just be patient. It's almost here. Mike will tell us when in just a bit. If you missed out on the PlayStation 5 pre-order, you have another option. Plus, a preview of how many Americans will be paying for Christmas presents this year. Our Sarah Costa joins us now with today's top consumer stories. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Good morning. Sarah. Well, surprise, surprise, Americans will be spending money. Mm -hmm. But first, let's talk about PlayStation 5. So if you weren't able to pre-order a PS5, Burger King wants to give you the chance to win one. The fast food restaurant is teaming up with Sony for a contest. It starts on October 15th. Customers can get a scratch-off game token with their qualifying food order. There are 1,000 of the game consoles up for grabs. If you're not one of the lucky ones, Burger King has lots of food coupons you could win. And it looks like more Americans plan to do their holiday shopping with new store credit cards this year. Compare Cards by Lending Tree just released a study showing 44% of American consumers are somewhat likely to apply for store cards this year. That's a huge jump from 2019. The same study shows that 56% of people who had store branded credit cards in the past, well, they regret it getting them. Compare Card says young consumers and people who have taken the hardest financial hits from the pandemic are most likely to apply for those cards. There is some good news for these card holders. The average APR for store cards is slightly down from last year. And Amazon Prime Day deals continue today, and you may notice some changes in the boxes when they arrive. Amazon is sending boxes with a new, more eco-friendly design that has a large white pumpkin shape on the side. The pumpkin is for a new augmented reality app. You draw a face on the pumpkin and scan the nearby QR code with your phone, and then bippity-boppity-boom, the pumpkin drawing will come to life. Amazon says the pumpkin boxes will be shipped between now and Halloween. Mark and Stephanie? That's a good reason just to buy something from Amazon to get the box. I you mean, know, it's like, don't throw that box away because you know, like Rooney, <laughs> yes. she'd be so upset if she got to miss out on that pumpkin, like, oh, come she, into life. <laughs> she would. That's pretty cool. I mean, she's playing with those boxes anyway. Exactly. So How's it going well Bippity boppity boom. boom. Okay. Is it boom, boom. or boo? It's 2020. It's boo. It's, Mike, it, do you it, remember? Is it, is it boo or boo? Bippity boppity boo. Okay. Boo? I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. It's our mission, our quest, 542, 68 degrees. And up next, a look at how safety protocols to prevent the spread of COVID-19 have presented challenges for the staffing at the Bear County Elections Department. 545, I think we could all agree 2020 has been full of unexpected twists and turns. It's also been a chaotic one for the Bear County Elections Department. Our Myra Arthur talked with the elections administrator, Jackie Callanan, with the one in charge of making sure voters have a smooth experience. Now, while she weighs in on this year's election, Myra Arthur has a preview of this week's KSET Explains. The hurdles have been just they're popping up no matter where we go. What else can you do but laugh when it seems like every curveball has been thrown at you? Nobody knows what goes on behind the curtain. Jackie Callanan has been the Bear County Elections Administrator for 15 years, and this year's election already has been like no other. You know, if anyone had told me as an election administrator 
the, one of the supplies I would have to provide for an election would be a trash can and trash can liners. It would be like, what? <laughs> it just doesn't, doesn't compute. Safety protocols to prevent the spread of COVID-19 have presented challenges. The virus has also impacted staffing at the elections department. Because of social distancing, our training room that normally holds 80 people, we've cut it down to like 30. So we take reservations. The fear of contracting the virus while voting has more people who are eligible voting by mail. It's keeping the elections department busy. We're averaging about 500 a day that people are coming in when they deliver their ballot here. And it's not just COVID-19 that's made planning for this year's election harder. There have also been multiple legal battles, including one over straight ticket voting. Wait, don't, don't, don't pass go yet because we don't know what's going to happen. Despite the challenges, Callanan says the elections department is ready. We're here all day, every day. We've been here for the last six weeks. We've gone seven days straight and we will continue to do seven days straight until the election's over. Myra Arthur, KSAT 12 News. And KSAT explains voting during a pandemic will be available to stream tomorrow on the KSAT TV app or on KSAT.com slash explains. Shifting gears when it comes to our skin showing signs of aging, we often think about what may have caused it. As Max Massey explains, it may be what you're eating. Sun exposure is not the only thing that speeds up the aging process of our skin. Experts say it's also what we eat. If you're looking for healthy, younger looking skin, here's some of the foods to avoid. First, French fries. Experts say foods fried in oil at high temperatures release free radicals that can cause cellular damage to the skin. Exposure to free radicals speed up the aging process by cross-linking, which affects DNA and weakens skin's elasticity. French fries have a lot of salt, which can dehydrate your skin, making it more prone to wrinkles. Next, sugar. Experts say sugar is the reason behind a lot of skin concerns like acne. When our sugar levels are high, the aging process is sped up. If you're craving something sweet, experts say eat dark chocolate or fruit instead. Finally, try to use less butter and margarine. Studies show those who don't consume as much butter have less skin damage and wrinkles. That's because butter and margarine are higher in oils, which damages the skin. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Shh, our turn. Shh. Uh, 548, 68 degrees. <laughs> My turn. I'm not happy about those food choices. Let's go ahead and check traffic <laughs> with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, none of those are on the roadway right now. As uh, we take a look at High 10 and Dominion, you can see that uh, traffic is starting to improve out there now that we've uh, removed all those construction vehicles and those construction barrels from uh, the east and westbound lanes of I-10. Uh, all the way in through I-10 at the Y, traffic looking pretty good. 35 at Thousand Oaks, however, traffic is definitely starting to pick up both in the north and the southbound lanes. And then take a look at 410 at Northwest Military Highway. So far, no issues there. So all in all, not a bad commute on this hump day. Thank you, Marcus. Yeah, and you have some friends for us to mm -hmm. meet this morning. Before we talk about this guy back there, got to tell you about some pets over there. They need homes over at the San Antonio Humane Society. Look, look at the beautiful Aww. eyes. This is a one year old, a sweet girl, and name suits her very well. She is a cute, plump little one, Dumplin'. It's a great name. Uh -huh. She loves sunbathe and get all the attention. Like, oh, Aww. there we go. Beautiful warrior princess Xena. Strong two year old terrier, American pit bull mix. And Xena prefers the company of humans over other furry friends. She's got a lot of energy, needs her long walks, lots of play. And for more information, please visit sahumane.org, 4804 Fredericksburg Road. Two two six. That is the prettiest color of gray. I'm a little fond of gray, by the way. Uh, two two six seven four six one is the number two call. Reminds what? me of Sarah's cat Nora. Oh yeah, yeah, it yeah does. right. Yeah, Sarah's <laughs> Bivy has a, has a cat that looks like that. Dumplin and Zena. Aww. Who's looking at that going? Yeah, I wish I had one of those pools so I could get in. There. <laughs> it's a good no idea, kidding, right? <laughs> Jump in there with the uh, with the dog. OK, now back to this picture. <laughs> Beautiful day at the lake. Gorgeous egret, right? Egret, mm -hmm. I, I believe so. Be yeah, yes, that's what that's what we're going with right now. So sure, since we're all the ornithologists, but uh, uh, look <laughs> outside. Not, we're definitely not wild bird experts. <laughs> no, not at all. So all right, we don't have any visibility problems here in town at all. There's the, uh, by the way, the smokestacks of the quarry lit up in pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Hondo is 63, 66 in Uvalde, and Del Rio's at 71 degrees, so a lot of very mild temperatures this morning. It's not as though you walk outside and it kind of, you know, 
hits you in the face at all with the humidity, but it is definitely milder and more humid than what it was yesterday when it had dropped down so much. All right, as far as visibility, Pleasanton is back up to 10 miles, but we're seeing a hint of fog around Castorville right now. LaGrange still at zero, pea soup fog there, Victoria quarter mile and hints of fog down there around Catula as well as the right. So we'll keep watching this throughout the rest of the morning because this, as it usually does, just changes between all the different weather hits minute by minute, basically. And humidity throughout the rest of today, uh, there's a little bit of it out there. We're still below 60 right now, but notice how we kind of flirt with that. And then off to the east and southeast, of course, a bunch of humidity and the wind coming in here primarily out of the south is going to continue to pull that in. So it's going to be much more humid overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. So you'll definitely notice it tomorrow and that'll sort of hang out throughout the day. But then here comes some of that drier air, which will start to push in here. And that's going to be in the about late afternoon dinner time and early evening hours as the front moves on through here and that will get rid of the humidity. That'll drop things down. That's going to allow temperatures to drop down pretty good on uh, Friday. Then we'll start to see it increase again by Saturday somewhat and that's when they see the coldest temperatures, but that's not going to live all that long. It'll be Friday and early Saturday with that good, good crisp feel of fall. Then it's going to be back to warm, but then it looks like another front moves on through here. But still, we don't have much going on around the country. And unfortunately, what you can take away from this is not a lot of rain. Might see a couple of showers as the front comes through tomorrow night, late into early Friday, but that's going to be few and far between at best. 83 degrees, mostly sunny skies today at noon, already at the normal high temperature at noon, and then a high today up to 92, mostly sunny skies, and you'll definitely feel that 92. Won't be overly humid, though. Different situation tomorrow. The front's moving through a couple hours later than it had looked earlier in the week, so that's going to allow us a couple more hours to warm up, so we will make it up into the low 90s again tomorrow. A couple of showers overnight into Friday. I'm going for only 68 on Friday. I think we keep enough clouds around there. Blustery, beautiful football weather. Ooh, hot chocolate Friday night, mm. sitting in the stands, watching football. Mm -hmm. Yeah, much better than last Friday. Yeah. For football fans, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take it. Thank you, Mike. Right now it's four, uh, 553, 68 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lottery numbers. We have pick three, seven, two, three, fireball zero, three, nine, seven, five, fireball six. There you cash five numbers, one, eight, 11, 12, 15. And we also have, I'm sorry, 14. Sorry, Mike was covering the numbers. Uh, Mega Millions <laughs> numbers, 11, 44, 45, 46, 70. Mega Ball 25, Mega Plier two. I can usually work around Mike. I failed this time. <laughs> Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, big concerns as coronavirus cases surge across this country. And for the second time in two days, a major clinical trial in the fight against the coronavirus has been halted. We're going to have the latest right here on GMA. Coming up today on GMS 89, the spooky fun continues with Katie's Science Lab. This week's experiment requires a bit of homework. We're learning how to make oozing pumpkins, so you'll need to carve a pumpkin first. Other supplies you'll need are elephant toothpaste, which we learned to make a few weeks ago, an empty glass or jar, hydrogen peroxide, active yeast versus the lazy kind, dish soap, warm water, and food coloring. Join us today at 9 to see how it all comes together. Looking forward to it. It's a lot of fun every week. Many people buy and use pink products to contribute to Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll tell you what you need to look out for when it comes to a scam known as pink washing. And Trans Guide I 10 at the Dominion Traffic Building out there by uh, the uh, shops at Lock and Terra and Leon Springs. Marcus will get you updated on the morning commute thus far at the top of the hour. It was a busy day for early voting, but now that the dust has settled, we are getting the first look at early vote totals. We're going to hear some reactions from people who waited in line for hours at the polls. It was another round of questioning for Supreme Court nominee Judge Amy Coney Barrett. We'll hear what some senators asked the nominee about her judicial preferences. And taking a look out with live cam, 67 degrees, not bad, but I definitely felt the difference this morning from yesterday morning. Still, good news ahead. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Wednesday, October 14th. Thanks for joining us. Rise and shine. Time to get up. We have great news for the end of the week. 
We do. <laughs> a strong cold front is on the way, but first things first, Mike was mentioning perhaps the possibility of some fog in the KSAT 12 viewing area or parts of the viewing area this morning. Already seen some out there because the humidity is back a little bit, but like you're saying, it's not, you know, it not hitting you in the face. Right, not too bad. But just enough to kind of go, well, it's not yesterday. Exactly. When you step outside. Uh, visibility is still good here in town, so that's not a problem. Dew point temperatures, you know, 60 is that magic number that, uh, I shouldn't say magic number, the threshold. Above that, you start to feel the humidity. That's the case at Port S.A., Pleasanton. The dew point is 69. That's getting up there since 64. Elsewhere, you know, it's okay but definitely more than yesterday. And here's what we're talking about with fog. LaGrange still has pea soup, zero visibility, Victoria, a lot of it, and Catula has dropped down ever so slightly. So it's not widespread, but where there is fog, it is definitely thick, especially off to the east. We're going to have to watch for this to try and creep in a little further uh, to the west over the next couple of hours. Pleasanton at one point dropped down to five miles visibility. Now it's back up, obviously, to clear skies, but that can change very quickly. A lot of allergens, not a lot of the allergens, though, a whole list of them, mold, ragweed, juniper, and pigweed, everything is on the low side. Temperatures uh, basically steady throughout the rest of the morning because this humidity is going to not allow us to drop down as much as we have the past couple of days. So we're going to stay about uh, four degrees or so above normal. They fluctuate a degree or two. And then nice warm up throughout the morning. We'll deal with some of the clouds this morning. Get up to 83 normal high temperature at noon and add to that. So we're going to be up into the low 90s later on today. Southeasterly wind is going to continue to pull in the humidity. It's not like it's going to be oppressively humid today. You'll just sort of notice it tomorrow. Same number, more humidity, though. Then that front will move through here. Exactly when it's coming through and what's in store in behind it. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. All the wonderful folks in blue and this gentleman with the pink patches of patches patches on this morning. Marcus, take it away, please. <laughs> I think we're all having that issue this morning. We all need more coffee. Let's get it on an IB line right now as we take a look at the roadway. Still uh, no issues on the main lanes and the great news is everyone's still well within the normal travel time range on the various highways. 35 at Wiener We're starting to see uh, increases in the traffic both in the north and the southbound lanes. However, roads are dry and right now no accidents on the highways. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, sir. New this morning, San Antonio police trying to figure out what led to a shooting on the northeast side. They say it happened at the corner of Eisenhower and Walsham around three this morning. Police say a man was driving a car when he felt a bullet hit him. He drove to a Shell gas station for help and was taken to Bamsey with a gunshot wound to the arm. Police say the shooting appears to be random and they are still looking for a suspect they say drove off. There is an Amber Alert out this morning for a missing teen from San Juan, Texas. This is 17-year-old Aranza Diaz Laraga. Police say she was last seen at her home in San Juan yesterday evening. She's about five foot tall with brown eyes and blonde hair. If you see her, you are asked to call the San Juan Police Department at 956-223-2400. First day of early voting here in Bear County now in the books and this morning we know more than 33,000 people voted. Long lines became the story of the day with some people waiting hours to cast their vote. Our Sarah Costa joins us in the studio to break down the first day of early voting. Good morning, guys. And all throughout the day yesterday, viewers are posting pictures and videos of long lines at polling locations around town. And now we are hearing from some of the people who are in those lines in Windcrest. Lines stretch from the Civic Center out to the road. Some people were surprised by the massive turnout and were happy to see so many people participating. But at the same time, others were frustrated with how long the process took, saying they wish there was a better way to get people in and out in a timely manner. I was at the very entrance. We were in line for three and a half hours before we got inside. Anybody after eight, it was a six to seven hour window. It was, it was, it's, it's just utterly ridiculous. Meanwhile, food trucks pulled up at the AT&T Center, which is being used as a mega voting site because so many voters try to vote on their lunch breaks. Nonprofit food truck, the Chow Train, handed out free lunches. The people standing in line are hungry and I know thirsty and so we just wanted to encourage people just to keep stand in line, stay in line and vote. It is very kind that people are out here giving away free food for, for those who have voted and it just speaks volumes to how important this uh, election is. 
Well, early voting continues for the next three weeks. In our next half hour, I will go over making a plan to vote so you can efficiently let your voice be heard. Mark. Sarah, thank you. To the pandemic now, local health officials reporting 172 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County and six new deaths. The seven-day moving average now at 138 cases a day. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says he'll make an announcement today regarding local bars. He says he's waiting on health information he requested from Metro Health and on recommendations from the Community Resource Center. He'll give an update later today on, we will give an update later today on what Judge Wolf has decided. Drug maker Pfizer is planning to start testing its experimental coronavirus vaccine on children as young as 12. The researcher leading the drug trial says parents have already expressed interest in enrolling their kids. It will be the first coronavirus vaccine trial to include children in the U.S. The vaccine research sensor Center at Cincinnati Children's Hospital says teenagers aged 16 and 17 will get the vaccine this week. The center says kids between the ages of 12 to 15 will be enrolled in the trial later. In the Supreme Court nomination hearings, uh, Senate Democrats tried to get Judge Amy Coney Barrett to tip her hand on issues like the Affordable Care Act, abortion rights, and a potential dispute in the upcoming election. But the Supreme Court nominee declined, citing the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's approach to her 1993 hearings. No hints, no previews. CNN's Karen Kafa has more. Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett seeking to assure Senator she'll maintain judicial independence. I made no promises to anyone. I have no agenda. Just three weeks before Election Day, Barrett faced questions from members of the Senate Judiciary Committee about possible election-related disputes involving the president who nominated her. Are you able to commit to recuse yourself from disputes that arise out of the 2020 presidential election? I will apply the factors that other justices have before me in determining whether the circumstances require my recusal or not. And the Affordable Care Act at the center of a case to be argued on November 10th. 135 million Americans with pre-existing conditions are now depending on the protections of the Affordable Care Act. What weight would you give that? I can't really give you the kind of commitment or pre-commitment that you're asking for me. Judge Barrett also declined to preview how she might rule on cases involving abortion rights. Do you agree with Justice Scalia's view that Roe can and should be overturned by the Supreme Court? I can't express views on cases or pre-commit um, to approaching a case any particular way. She got personal, describing discussions she had with her husband about her nomination. We had to decide whether those difficulties would be worth it because what sane person would go through that if there wasn't a benefit on the other side? In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. 608, 67 degrees. And a new penguin cam lets us take a look at the animals at SeaWorld. We're going to tell you how to watch later on GMSA. Many people buy or use pink products to help contribute to Breast Cancer Awareness Month. After the break, what you need to look out for when it comes to a charity scam known as pink washing. And taking a look out with live cam, it's 67 degrees. Watch out for fog, but again, looking forward to colder weather. Should we have a countdown clock for our cold front? Yes, let's yes. make that graphic. Mike, right now. can we do that? <laughs> That's a no. No. That's a no. <laughs> we'll be back. KSA 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. For some San Antonio families, Day of the Dead means writing calaveras, poking fun at those you love or despise through these witty poems. It's common in Mexico. So how did calaveras come to San Antonio? Would you believe that one person brought them over? Moises Espino del Castillo. Castillo meaning castle. So he then becomes the Duke of Calaveras. He was asked to write some poetry for our local newspaper back in the early, early 70s. He was a Spanish professor, so all his work was done in Spanish. So then he was asked to do some calaveras, which he objected to because he said, no one going to be able to read them in an English-speaking newspaper. But nonetheless, he did write them and started then a 30-year career in writing calaveras. I think that is just one of the most incredible things that you can single-handedly say this person brought the Calaveras to San Antonio, Texas.
Just shy of 614 during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, you'll see pink everywhere from ribbons and shirts to sports jerseys. It's a great way to support the cause, but you have to be careful. Just because it's pink doesn't mean it's actually supporting the movement to find a cure for breast cancer. October is the month where many take the time to show support for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and pink is the color of choice when it comes to showing your involvement. Many different organizations sell things like t-shirts, jewelry, and even kitchen appliances to get people involved. But with the good also comes the bad, as some charity scammers can prey on people's good intentions to generate income for themselves. It's something that's called pink washing. The Better Business Bureau says that it has found pink products ranging from lint rollers to teddy bears. Products like these usually have a shop for the cure label or other marketing language that leads people to believe that by buying the product, they're helping cure breast cancer. The founder of the cancer nonprofit Cleaning for Reasons says people really need to look twice at what they are buying and contributing to. Consumers should look out for vague claims on packaging and be aware of products that require you to mail in a proof of purchase before donations are made. And it looks like there's some activity at 35 and Division out Yeah, there. we just got an alert from Officer Marcus Trujillo. What are the details, Marcus? Well, this is on the access road, not on the main lane. So that's the great news. And that accident is in the process of being cleared up and right smack in the middle of your uh, screen there, there is the tow truck. So there you see the uh, flatbed tow truck hooking up that Vehicle. Once we remove that vehicle, we can clear that intersection. But once again, it's on the access road, not on the main lane. So right now, no delays in anyone's travel times on the main lanes of the highways. On the main lanes. Got it. All right. Thanks, Marcus. Uh, Mike joins us now to summon the school buses. Yes, indeed. And I was just thinking, you know, we're talking about the people voting, waiting in line. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you take some shade with you and, uh, and some water too. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it takes a long time, but you know, it's definitely worth the wait. Um, and it's going to be warm again today, warm again tomorrow as well. 65 this morning uh, will stay basically steady. There is a bit more humidity, not that you really, you know, notice it when you open up the door, but just kind of sort of and then that's helping out with some uh, some patchy fog around the area and then 92 for a high temperature later on today with uh, plenty of sunshine out there and southerly wind at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Another beautiful, beautiful picture from Woodlawn Lake. Oh my goodness. That looks like a painting. Look at the reflection there in the water and how just perfectly still that water is. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture uh, and a look outside. We don't have anything really uh, visibility problems here in town, but there's a lot of fog, especially off to the east. More on that in just a second. All right. This is what the year looks like as far as normal temperatures. 30 year average high temperatures. Of course, we peaked in uh, right around the first couple of weeks of August 97, and then we're going to be dropping down to 62. And notice how this graph is not perfectly symmetrical. It takes a while for the warm up all the way from the 1st of January, or first couple of weeks of January into late August, but then things do drop down fairly quickly. So we lose about 10 degrees every month, say two, two and a half degrees every week as far as the normal high temperature is concerned. Right now, our normal high is in the uh, low 80s and we'll continue to drop down from there. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to be in the low 80s, as is evident with the forecast today and tomorrow. We're going to be 10 degrees above that. All right, it looks like the fog has gotten just a bit thicker there around Castroville, five miles visibility as of right now and still a ton of it off in LaGrange and Victoria, a little bit down around Catula as well as Laredo. So again, this is one of those situations. We've got to keep watching all morning long. 56 is the uh, dew point temperature here in town. That's still comfortable. And you'd love to see that in the summertime, but not necessarily this time of year. And then a lot more humidity down to the south and uh, southeast. Humidity later on this afternoon is not going to be oppressive by any means, but it's not going to be not not going to be dry out there at all. And then overnight we're going to be seeing the humidity definitely come back up with dew points staying very high. And so that's going to keep low temperatures very high tomorrow. There comes the drier air that will start to work its way in here then tomorrow evening with the passage of the front and that'll really drop things down for Friday and that's going to be a pretty cool day. We're going to have some clouds around here on Friday, maybe a couple of sprinkles as the front moves through late tomorrow night and then into the early morning hours of Friday, perhaps even uh, mid morning. It's going to be few and far between. I mean, 
most of us won't see anything from that. We are obviously seeing colder air up there to the north, uh, but notice how everything is kind of moving straight west to east as of right now. That's the upper level winds, the, the jet stream, if you will. That's kind of the dividing line between the colder air, but notice how it starts to bend and this northwesterly flow pulls that front down through here. So that brings in the great weather that sort of eases up a little bit going into the weekend. We'll warm back up into the 80s by Sunday. Then another quick little shot of uh, some colder air is going to move in here to kind of trim temperatures a bit by the first of the week. So like I was saying yesterday, at least it's nice a uh, fall pattern where you get every couple of days. Now it looks like some sort of a front strong or not as strong is going to be coming on through here. 83 at noon, already the normal high temperature, mostly sunny skies high today up to 92 and we're going to be up there again tomorrow. Difference being it's going to be a more humid 92 tomorrow. Look at those low temperatures staying at 70 tomorrow, but then 59 Friday morning, maybe a couple of sprinkles around here. Um, a jacket, maybe a good idea on Friday, kind of breezy, kind of cloudy throughout most of the day. Good football weather tomorrow night down to 50 Friday, Saturday morning. Nice. We won't look at the rest of the graphic there. Yeah, it's that's okay. On Sunday. Oh, you're going to need a real jacket by Saturday morning, mm -hmm. not yeah. just a light one. Yeah, and, and and that's dependent on cloud cover too. A couple more clouds won't stay as cold, but it'll feel, you know, a little cooler out there. But yeah, it's going to be going to be nice. Won't last forever though. It's okay. We'll take it. I'll finally use my running jacket that's been in hibernation all summer. So okay. yeah, Saturday Good morning. Pictures. Model it for us. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Only if you model something for us as well. Don't want to see that. A new tie. New tie. 620, 67 degrees. Deal. <laughs> Apple announced the new iPhone, and with it are some big changes in today's GMA First Look. We're going to take a look at some of the new features that has the tech world buzzing. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. My husband and I have never eaten healthier. <laughs> Jingles doesn't care. I logged 10,000 steps today. Jingles doesn't care. I get as much fresh air as possible. Good for you, but Shingles doesn't care. Because one in three people will get Shingles. You need protection. But no matter how healthy you feel, your immune system declines as you age, increasing your risk for getting Shingles. So what can protect you? Shingrix protects. For the first time ever, you can protect yourself from Shingles with a vaccine proven to be over 90% effective. Shingrix is a vaccine used to prevent shingles in adults 50 years and older. Shingrix does not protect everyone and is not for those with severe allergic reactions to its ingredients or to a previous dose. The most common side effects are pain, redness, and swelling at the injection site, muscle pain, tiredness, headache, shivering, fever, and upset stomach. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about protecting yourself with Shingrix. Shingles doesn't care. Shingrix protects. In this morning's GMA First Look, a closer look at the new iPhone. This is the day we've all been looking forward to. New models with better cameras, a magnetic back for accessories or charging, and new colors. This is the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro. The first thing I notice is the squared off edges. Then there's the new colors. This is blue and Pacific blue. But the big headline, it's Apple's first 5G iPhone. Today, we're bringing 5G to iPhone. Hardly anybody can get it. Is it worth upgrading to this phone just for that? I'm not going to say go out and run to get 5G. I don't think you really need to go get a 5G phone yet. You may not use it, but this is kind of a way to future-proof yourself. And coming up at 7 a.m., only Good Morning America has exclusive access to the new iPhone. We'll show you firsthand all the new features and details that has the phone world buzzing. So stay tuned. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. 625, a local barbecue chain expanding with a new headquarters here in San Antonio. And you can now watch birds in tuxedos for hours.
hours on end. <laughs> Our Sarah Costa is live in the newsroom with what's trending on KSET.com. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Well, maybe not birds in actual tuxedos, but we are talking penguins in San Antonio. But first, let's talk barbecue. San Antonio based barbecue chain Bill Miller Barbecue plans to build a new headquarters on the west side with an estimated cost of $60 million. State documents show the planned campus would house a two story, 335,000 square foot building at 5330 State Highway 151, according to architectural records filed with the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. The construction start date is listed as January 4th, 2021. And if you would like to take a break from 2020, you can chill out with the new 24 7 Penguin live cam. KSAT.com has teamed up with SeaWorld San Antonio to live stream its Penguin exhibit on our website. But grab a jacket, it's 35 degrees in that penguin enclosure. You can watch the penguins dive, swim, eat, and take sporadic naps throughout the day. If you head to KSAT.com, the live stream page also explains why penguins keep it so formal with their tuxedos. And I just watched the penguin cam for the past half hour. It's very entertaining. <laughs> I highly recommend it. And did you know penguins sometimes sleep standing up like this? Aww. Like really? yeah. I had I had heard they, they stood up, but I didn't know that they would put their head up as well. Sarah, I think we just <laughs> figured out our new spirit animals. Aww. Mm -hmm. Very dressed up and ready to go. Yeah, because we've learned how to sleep standing up. Yes, that too. <laughs> Time now, 627 and 67 degrees for now. Well, as you may know by now, voting now taking place in Bear County. We'll hear from the elections administrator on challenges of voting in a pandemic and how believes she how she believes rather how safe it is to go to the polls. And also in this next half hour, one of the creators of the homework helpline at NISD will join us to talk about the impact it has had on students learning from home. Straight to live cam this morning. If just now waking up, we've got temperatures in the mid to upper 60s, depending on where you are at. But uh, the major headline still waiting on that cold front. And this one is going to pack another pretty good wallop. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is October 14th. Happy Wednesday. Yes, I'm looking forward to the cold front, looking forward to like digging out the sweaters, the jackets, even if it's temporary. Even if it is yeah. temporary. Mike joins us now. And Mike, you said the front's actually slowed down a smidge. Couple, couple of hours. Okay. It, uh, earlier in the week, it looked like it was going to be coming through here, say about mid afternoon uh, tomorrow. Now it's going to be later in the afternoon or even into the just early evening hours, about dinner time or, or just thereafter. So the biggest um, Biggest difference, I guess, is the fact that then we're going to have a couple of extra hours to heat up. Had we come through about mid-afternoon, obviously that put a lid on the heating, but we're going to have some extra time to heat up tomorrow afternoon, so that's going to put us back up into the low 90s again tomorrow. Right now, 67 degrees. Normal low is 61, so 5, 6 degrees above that, and also dew points are definitely up compared to yesterday. Still below the threshold of 60, but there's enough out there to where you kind of sort of feel it when you step outside this morning. Visibility five miles Castorville. We're now starting to see just a hint of fog there at Stinson and more of it off to the east. It actually has improved slightly around LaGrange. Victoria still at a quarter mile and we've got a bit of fog if you're heading down 35 in toward Catula as well as Laredo. So this will be an issue something we have to watch out for for probably at least the next couple of hours. A lot of uh, list of big long list of allergens out there, but not a lot showing up. Everything is on the low side and uh, it's pleasant this morning, though. Not as crisp. Some of that patchy fog around the area, mostly sunny, low 90s. So it's going to be hot again today and then tomorrow. It's going to be hot. Very warm, I think, is kind of tempering it just a bit. It's just going to be low 90s, hot and more humid tomorrow. And then that front comes through in the evening. So that'll cool us off. Maybe squeeze out a couple of showers. That's not going to be a big deal. But yeah, windy and kind of blustery and cold. And yep, you can pull out that jacket. If only for a day or a day and a half, like Stephanie was talking about. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Marcus Trujillo and nothing. Still looking great out there. Good. Now, we did have that accident right down the south side, but it was on the access road. Now, that's cleared up and it's all out of the way. Let's take a look at some Transcot cameras. We're starting to see increases in the traffic, which is about to be expected just after 630 in the morning. 
Take a look. That's 410 at Quilevita Road. Very busy in both directions. So hopefully you'll get a move on uh, before you get stuck in something like this. Just remember, put away those distractions, those cell phones, those coffee cups, and watch that following distance once you head out. Stephanie? Thank you, Marcus. A car chase has led straight to jail for a teen driver. Castle Hills police caught up with him this morning after he crashed in a neighborhood off of Vance Jackson Road near Interstate 10. Our Katrina Weber is live where it all happened. Now, Katrina, we understand police say there were some suspicious circumstances both inside and outside the car. Well, that's right. Officers spent some time in this area searching for a gun, which they say that that teen driver tossed out of the car along the way. They say they also uh, were talk they also were looking into a woman who was inside his car, an older woman who that driver says he just met and picked up. Now, police did catch up with that 17 year old driver after he turned off Vance Jackson onto Greenwood Greenhaven Drive. They say he crashed head on into a newspaper delivery person's car and no one was hurt in the crash. But that is where the run ended for the teen driver. Officers originally had tried to stop him somewhere in Castle Hills before five this morning, but he kept going. At one point along the way, police say he drove onto a dead end street, but then managed to slip by officers by driving into a ditch. But when it was over, officers took the 17 year old driver and the 27 year old woman in his car into custody. It's unclear if they ever found the gun, which they say he tossed out of the window along the way. Reporting live from the Northwest Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 635, we already know about the long lines on the first day of early voting and have heard from people who stood outside those polling locations to cast their ballots. This morning, we now know just how many people voted on the first day and why it's important to make a plan for voting. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio to break it all down. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Well, 33,111 people cast their ballot yesterday, and although it wasn't a record, still a lot of people. The 2018 midterm election had more people show up to the polls on day one. The Bear County Elections Office says just over 34,000 people voted on the first day of early voting two years ago. However, mail-in ballots are much higher in Bear County this year. The Elections Department says more than 40,000 have already been processed for the 2020 election. In 2018, fewer than 12,000 ballots were mailed in. Now, because so many viewers are concerned about those long lines at the poll, we created a checklist to make a plan to vote. According to the National Education Association, you first need to learn about the candidates. You can view past debates between local candidates on KSAT.com or read a comparison in the 2020 Voter Guide, which was published by the League of Women Voters in San Antonio. And be sure to write down who you plan to vote for and take it with you. Next, head to our website to find your polling location. Early voting locations may be different than your normal polling place, but you can cast your vote at any spot in Bear County. Then plan your transportation. See if there is parking on site and if you need to pay for it. If there is not a lot of space, it might be better to take an Uber or Lyft. Some ride sharing companies even offer discounts to go to the polls. And it is always helpful to take a friend or two with you. And early voting continues for the next few weeks. You can find all the information you, didn't, you need to know on our Vote 2020 page on KSAT.com. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you very much, Sarah. We could all agree 2020 has been full of unexpected twists and turns. It's also been a chaotic one for the Bear County Elections Department. The elections administrator, Jackie Kaladin, in charge of it all and ensuring voters have a smooth experience. Our Myra Arthur has a preview in this week's Case at Explains. The hurdles have been just they're popping up no matter where we go. What else can you do but laugh when it seems like every curveball has been thrown at you? Nobody knows what goes on behind the curtain. Jackie Callanan has been the Bear County Elections Administrator for 15 years, and this year's election already has been like no other. You know, if anyone had told me as an election administrator that one of the supplies I would have to provide for an election would be a trash can and trash can liners, it would be like, what? <laughs> It just doesn't doesn't compute. Safety protocols to prevent the spread of COVID-19 have presented challenges. The virus has also impacted staffing at the elections department. Because of social distancing, our training room that normally holds 80 people, we've cut it down to like 30. 
so we take reservations. The fear of contracting the virus while voting has more people who are eligible voting by mail. It's keeping the elections department busy. We're averaging about 500 a day that people are coming in when they deliver their ballot here. And it's not just COVID-19 that's made planning for this year's election harder. There have also been multiple legal battles, including one over straight ticket voting. Wait, don't, don't, don't pass go yet because we don't know what's going to happen. Despite the challenges, Kalanen says the elections department is ready. We're here all day, every day. We've been here for the last six weeks. We've gone seven days straight and we will continue to do seven days straight until the election's over. Myra Arthur, KSAT 12 News. KSAT explains voting during a pandemic will be available to stream tomorrow on the KSAT TV app or on KSAT.com slash explains. In your other morning headlines, third day of Senate confirmation hearings will continue today for Supreme Court nominee Judge Amy Coney Barrett. Yesterday, senators tried to determine her stance on issues like abortion, health care, and post-election cases. Despite strong opposition from Democrats, there seemed to be enough votes to confirm her to the U.S. Supreme Court. Speaking of the Supreme Court, the court will allow President Donald Trump's administration to end the census count early. The president's administration says the shortened deadline is necessary to give the Commerce Department enough time to meet a December 31st deadline to report final numbers. Critics of the decision say minorities will be undercounted in that census. Three out of the five people accused of planning to kidnap Michigan's Governor Gretchen Whitmer will not be given bail. The judge in the hearing said she'd rule on the bond status of the other two in the coming days. Meanwhile, a sixth person from Delaware faces charges in a plot and will be transferred to Michigan for trial. If you receive Social Security, you will see a bump in your monthly check. Payments will go up by $20 on average. However, many Americans say the increase will not cover the growing cost of groceries and other expenses. The increase is expected to go into effect in January. Time check, 640, 67 degrees. Northside ISD using a homework helpline to aid students learning virtually. We're going to hear from the person who helped put it together after the break. And welcome back. It's 644. Many districts started the school year virtually and it's been an adjustment for administrators, teachers, parents, and of course, students. Well, the area's largest district, Northside ISD, set up a homework helpline for students who need assistance with those core courses. And joining us live now to talk about this helpline is the director of the Office of Student Advocacy and School Choice, Kathy Lissy. Good morning. Hi, Hi Kathy. Good morning. Well, Kathy, we know the helpline is virtual, but how did this all start and how does it work? Well, it, I have to give credit. It all started with Dr. Woods had an idea that he wanted to set this up. And I was called in along with a team of people to do all the preparation. Um, and so the students can access the tutoring, the helpline through their uh, My NISD portal and most teachers have it in their Schoology in each course. And so then they log in and it's very similar to the chats you see when you go to a, uh, a vendor or a store. And then from there, our tutors can send them a Google link or a, uh, a Google Meets link or a Zoom link to do live tutoring if, if that's what the student prefers. Kathy, how many certified teachers are staffing this virtual homework helpline? We are right at 100 uh, Northside teachers. Oh, wow. And, and all, just to make sure, all students are eligible, correct? Absolutely. Um, at elementary, we have because we have the dual language program, we have at least one bilingual certified teacher every evening for uh, or every shift for elementary. And then most of, we have a lot of tutors for the secondary that are also bilingual. And since this started, we had demand. So we've added uh, Schoology help uh, for the kids. And then we've also just recently added Spanish. Uh, for the high school and some of the college credited classes, as well as um, we're starting to help with a special class in eighth grade com apps. It's a kind of a speech class. You have any idea how many students have been served so far and, and what are the kiddos saying about this, uh, this helpline? So we're right at um, 8,000 call-ins since uh, August 31st. Um, now, some of those are offline chats that they they reach us during the day when we're not there, and then we, we contact them um, through email later. 
And the feedback we've gotten is really, really positive from the students. They, they absolutely love it. And I will tell you, our tutors love it too, because they feel like it is a chance to do what they were hired, to, you know, what they always wanted to do. And that's working with kids one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, one of the things we've also surprisingly gotten some feedback on is from parents, because they said that it kind of takes that stress off of them. They know their kid can get help on especially like the on-ramps and AP courses that maybe they're not as comfortable with, so. Definitely a plus for us parents. <laughs> Kathy Lissy with Northside ISD, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you, Kathy. Thank y'all, have a great day. You, you too. too, thank you so much. Let's check in with the gentleman at the top of the class when it comes to time saver <laughs> traffic, and that would be Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you, Mark, and as we Take a look at the map here. Still no incidents, but we are seeing increases in the traffic in different parts of the city. Not to the point where we're seeing delays in the travel time, though. Fort Tinnacle are very busy. Let's move over here. 1604 Kyle Seal also seeing steady streams of traffic both on the east and the westbound main lanes. Mike. Thank you, sir. And wow, another fantastic picture from Mr. Childers down there in Catula. Yep, what a beauty. Oh, my God. Gosh, that's pretty. Thank you so much for the KSAC Connect picture. And well, still got about another uh, sun comes up at 735. So you know, we've got about 50 minutes until it comes up. We're not seeing any glow as of yet. Maybe at the at the very end of the uh, newscast, we'll start to see that glow of the sunrise. 67 here in town, 72 Port SA. And then look at the dew point temperatures. Measure moisture in the atmosphere. It's definitely gone up at Port SA. I mean, that's a bunch of humidity. And 69 at Stinson. And where you have the humidity or the dew point temperature and the air temperature running neck and neck, that's where we're seeing a little bit of humidity or a little bit of fog. Castro, five miles of visibility, Stinson at nine. Then look at these temperatures 69 in LaGrange, Victoria 67. And the dew point temperatures are, well, that's the same 100% humidity in LaGrange. That, with some other factors, is why we've got the very thick fog, although it has improved just in the past couple of minutes. Now up to two miles of visibility, still at a quarter mile in Victoria. But yeah, a bunch more humidity than what we had yesterday. Of course, you know, dropped like a rock yesterday from the previous day, but now it's starting to return, but it will be dropping off again late tomorrow night into uh, Friday morning as that front moves on through here. Computer model for the next uh, couple of days. We'll have morning clouds this morning, sunshine in the afternoon. Now this has colors in rain. This is basically just all the humidity coming back in here in the cloud cover tomorrow morning. And then notice by the evening hours, that's when uh, the front's going to start to work its way on through here. And that will help to touch off a little bit of rain. Now this tends to kind of broad brush things. It's not going to be this widespread. As a matter of fact, I think most of it would be east of I-35. But there will be a few showers out there as the front moves on through late tomorrow night, early say up to about mid morning, perhaps on Friday morning, and then we'll uh, start to bring it into that. But I think we still keep a lot of clouds around Friday, and that's going to help to hold temperatures down. Yeah, there is some very cold air up there to the north of us, but notice how most of all of that is working its way to the east, but starting to drift a little bit southward. So we're starting to see the somewhat of the uh, the changes in the upper level wind flow, which will then eventually pull that front through here. But we got to wait another almost day and a half. 83 degrees today at noon, already at the normal high temperature. And then we add to that about 10 degrees. And you'll kind of feel that 92, not oppressive humidity, but just enough out there. Now, the humidity is really going to come back in here overnight. So that's going to hold us at 70 tomorrow morning, 92 again tomorrow. Front moves through. In the evening hours, about dinner time, a little bit after that, wind's going to pick up, going to be blustery on Friday. We'll have a couple of showers in the morning. Temperatures only 68 degrees, plenty of clouds, great football weather. Hot coffee, hot chocolate. Yes, indeed. <laughs> that jacket you've been dying to wear. The jacket I've been dying to wear all summer long. <laughs> Yay. She'll have that it on scarf Sunday. scarf you've been dying to wear. <laughs> all that stuff, all right? But you won't need it by Sunday. No. Yeah, it's all right. It's okay. But if it's that cute, she'll still keep it on. You know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> You've never met flannel you didn't like, right? True. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Very telling. 650, 67 degrees. And moving in together is one of the biggest steps you can take in a relationship. Tomorrow on GMSA, some of the things you should consider with your partner before you make any decisions. Or just don't do it. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, outside with live cam. <laughs> It's hard to see much of anything out there. Mike's been talking fog all day. We'll get another check in with that and check on traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, big concerns as coronavirus cases surge across this country. And for the second time in two days, a major clinical trial in the fight against the coronavirus has been halted. We're going to have the latest right here on GMA. Coming up today on GMS 89, the spooky fun continues in Katie Science Lab. This week's experiment requires a little bit of homework. Yay! We're learning how to make oozing pumpkins. So you need to carve a pumpkin first. Mm -hmm. The other supplies you'll need are elephant toothpaste, which we learned how to make a few weeks ago. So if you don't remember, Kesa.com. An empty glass or jar, hydrogen peroxide, active yeast, dish soap, warm water, and food coloring. And quite a mix of stuff there. Mm -hmm. Join us today at 9 to see how all that comes together with Katie Blake. Let's go ahead and take one last look at traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, things were looking fairly well, and uh, then let's see if I find it for you folks there. <laughs> okay, so the map, no problem there, but it's 410 and Callahan, and wouldn't you know it, right in the center lane where it's going to slow folks down. So on those eastbound main lanes of 410, headed from Bandera back over towards the I-10-410 interchange, watch out for that accident in the center lane. Mike. Thank you, sir. And looks like we're yeah, starting to see a little bit of the glow of the uh, sunrise. Some clouds well off to the east. Uh, temperatures are pretty mild this morning, well above normal, 60s and even some 70s. Got a lot of fog way off to the east. We'll have to keep an eye on that throughout the rest of the morning. And uh, we'll make it up to 83 at noon. That's the normal high, 92 a high temperature today, so it's going to be hot out there. Hot again tomorrow, but then uh, about dinner time, front moves on through here. I think we stay just shy of 70 tomorrow, upper 60s, kind of, or Friday, pardon me, and uh, kind of cloudy and good looking after that front. It's going to be guys. awesome. Have a great day. We'll see you back here at 9.